Hello and welcome back to the UK campaign and where we left off uh, it was 19 I believe 41 or 42 might have been 1942 um, and a lot has changed I have had to fall back from my push into Laos um, and into Vietnam purely because the Japanese rushed a ridiculous amount of units towards my lines uh, but I've been able to build a land connection over here because normally this starts with no infrastructure so India is now connected to Iran who is of course my puppet so all of the um, countries in Arabia and the Middle East have been able to move their units towards the front line so I've now got a very international force defending against the Japanese aggression in the Far East, including some Nepal and Bhutan units. Uh, on the naval side of things, uh, well actually one other thing on the land campaign over here, I have fought so many battles over this river line over the last three months, to the point where it is actually crazy the amount of battles that I've I had to fight in this area. And speaking of which, yeah, just make sure my tech's looking good. Um, so I'm sort of deciding in the Far East what to do next. I've had to defend Borneo from several invasions navally, but my garrisons have held firm. I've had to defend this peninsula south of Malaya. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of this um, this island. If anyone could let me know, I'd be internally grateful. And I've also been able to complete an encirclement of this whole peninsula here. So all of the Japanese units, about 300,000 troops I believe in total, were surrounded at Nakon Sai Famarat. I've also fought a number of naval engagements in the seas over here. Uh, both with submarines but also with Japanese aircraft carriers and battleships. I've managed to sink three Japanese battleships along with two carriers and a light carrier as well as several heavy cruisers, some destroyers, and a light cruiser. So we've managed to take some German losses, uh, and I've re-put most of the British home fleet into the port in Singapore, because Singapore is my main naval base with which to strike out against the Japanese, and I'm deciding where to go. I think a bit of an island hopping campaign to retake the Philippines wouldn't quite go amiss, so that's probably what I'll do. I'll maybe try and take this island here, at Puerto Princea, or maybe the southern island over here. I haven't quite decided yet what exactly I want to do with regards to my island hopping campaign. I mean, part of me thinks if I can go from uh, Kuala Belait up to Formosa, or what the Japanese would call Formosa, modern day Taiwan, that would be the perfect jumping off island for operations against Japan. So, my principal aim actually might be for most right? I haven't quite decided yet how I'm going to do that and to hold a pretty static line here because the main reason why I'm holding this line is because I want to hold a defensive position all like so across here. The only place at the moment where we're struggling to hold a little bit is down here uh, where the Australians allowed the Japanese to get a little bit of a toehold um, but I've got a couple of units here that I've moved to reinforce and hopefully kick them out of their holdings in... Again, I'm not sure what this is called. My my geography in this part of the world isn't great like it is in Europe. Um, in other news, we have managed to push against the Germans. Uh, but this has only really happened in the last month after Germany was throwing everything at us along this line here. They were just throwing... I mean, they've probably wasted... A lot of manpower fighting us here and it's starting to kick them or bite them in the ass because we're now able to start pushing into sort of the Italian German possessions up here and I did do a quick little naval landing just to do a conquer war goal against the Italian Socialist Republic and I thought that would get rid of all of their units but all it, all it did was make them jump over to Germany maybe I should have puppeted them that probably would have been a better idea uh, in the home islands, uh, we are suffering no convoy losses currently, which is amazing considering where we were at at one point. Germany's naval task force is completely eviscerated at this point. 
they have nothing going for us. Oh, and look, episode 47 of Fair Game. That's a Star Trek, pro uh, not Star Trek, Stargate podcast. It is a very good podcast. I recommend you uh, watch it. It's called Get Into Gate. I don't know if anyone's a Stargate fan. I'm a major Stargate fan. So there you go. There's your shout out for Stargate. In Scandinavia, I have managed to push out a little bit. And I'm trying to hold this river line here against the Hungarians, Romanians, Italians, and Finnish troops. And hopefully, you know, some work can be done to just keep this from being re-established. Because if we can cut off these units in Petsamo, like I've done up here. So we've actually cut off a pretty sizable amount of units in the north. With a couple of British infantry divisions. Under the command of Lord Gort, who was, of course, commander of the British Expeditionary Force back in 1940 41. Um, and that didn't go particularly well. But this time round, he's doing very well in the far north. Uh, we're still holding down Finland, or sorry, still holding down Norway and Sweden. And I think that is overall most of the tactical objectives um, in place. I can't invade. Germany through France at the moment because they still have a couple of decent units dotted around which will be very difficult to deal with. So I'm giving some thought on the best way to strike at Germany. As I say, I personally think a refocusing against the Japanese will probably be best. So we're going to put it on four speed. And, oh yes, the new version of the Mighty Hood was built, and it is now the pride of my navy, as it should be, because it is the Mighty Hood. So it might have been sunk in 19, I think it was 42, but luckily we've been able to rebuild another version. There's the German counterattack, as expected, let's move up. I say we move up here as well. We have won the Battle of Vala, where we've managed to kill 16,000 troops. Not too bad. And then they did an immediate counter-attack once again. Technology-wise, we're looking pretty well. And as well, one other thing to make you aware of. See, there's so much updates to give you in this episode. Uh, Diplomatically-wise, we have got pretty much the majority of the free world on side with us now. Including a pretty fair amount of South America. Uh, I'm waiting on Venezuela, who are literally just so close to joining. They've got a neutrality of 16.79. I'm waiting on Ecuador. But they're actually drifting towards the Axis at the moment, so that's a bit of a shame. Peru, who are, I think, moving towards the Allies as well. And finally, Argentina, who are also moving towards the Axis, but sort of Stuck in the middle a little bit. The same with the Turks. And Ireland actually joined us. Which, I mean, that's quite nice. That's a, a nice little change up. So we've got some Irish units to count on. And we just won the Battle of Anzio. Which is pretty good. Now as you can see, the Germans have taken an absolute hammering here. And the Americans are actually pulling their weight for a change. Quite shockingly. Now, once we break out of the little mountain chain that's sort of all along here, we reach some pretty... I mean, there's hills all along here and mountains. But if you can push past that, then, you know, overall, there's some pretty good plains terrain with which to move into. Uh, and you can establish almost a new defensive front line in the mountain chain here, which would be really good. That would be extremely positive. Also, the Soviets landed in Albania as well as in split which was quite impressive i've never seen the soviet ai actually do this so i'm not sure how that happened i'm not sure what they did to do that but wow impressive um now one other thing to make you aware of is that the soviets are pushing the germans out of the soviet union in fact in the last month they've managed to push the germans really far away from moscow um, and in fact, they're pushing, I think, into Ukraine now, which is really good. There's a chance that if they keep pushing, they could encircle all of Army Group North, which is pretty fascinating and amazing. 
I've got to give the Soviets credit. They're, they're doing a pretty good job. Not as good a job as I did in my campaign, bearing in mind that by this point I was knocking down on the front doorstep of Germany, but I'll give them their due. They're, they're doing all right. So let's do some more cruise attacks. And capital ship tax. And then we'll leave our officer ratio at 13. And see, we've got a fair amount of resources. Uh, we are being having our beaches stormed somewhere. Now, where would that be? Aha, okay. Our Atrian Ascari are going to have to defend themselves relatively well. As you can see, the Japanese have a lot of carriers. I mean, that force there is pretty much all carriers. Markerinta are being attacked by the, the Führer's Verwolf Garrison Division. Good luck with that. That's a relatively easy win. I think we should take all of these units and immediately push up. Oh, and they retook Rome. As I say, the Americans are, are really going strong here. I'm quite impressed. Now, I'm aiming for this Atrian Ascari to be able to actually hold this position against that Marine Division. Because this is what the Japanese have been doing. They've been landing either through scripts or through landings like that. Or as long as I control the port, there's no way for them to actually get supply. And then I just kill the units the moment they run out of supply. Which is really the perfect scenario. Supply might end up a little bit of an issue in this area. As we are running dangerously low on fuel using 72 a day hangar bay maintenance air base blueprints are both fine the only thing that we really lack is a decent air force my air force is I've, I've really underfunded it it's probably my biggest mistake of this campaign is actually my crappy air force It looks like I'm going to have to just hold off on my advance here for a minute. And they do need to get these units out of here. It's a shame we just can't quite push them 100% out. We've been attacked in Onalu. See, we can hold this river forever. Yeah, our infantry divisions up there in the north are pretty good. Oh, look at that. They retook Bryansk. Very nice. They're nearly at the Slemensk sort of bridgehead. Which, if they could retake that, that would be a massive help. They've taken Rizev back. Kalanin. Yeah, they need to literally just push from here to here. If they push from there to there, they can just encircle all of Army Group North. So tech-wise, we did the industrial zone. We'll get the capital ship one. But as I say, it's a little bit of all quiet at the moment, in a way. Uh, the only place where things are not quiet are, of course, against the Germans here. Where we are pushing into... Germany proper now, almost, in its own weird way. In fact, you know what, I might take 8 army here. Along with some of our weaker divisions and...
do that. Because that's going to break them immediately and allow us to push through. Right, engineer unit training. Engineers are very important. Let's get capital ship engines. And as I say, our fuel situation is a little bit of a travesty at the moment. I'm not sure where all the fuel is going because most of my air force and my ships and things are not actually attacking. Very good. Keep moving forwards. Right, that battle isn't winnable. division here that I want to stop from attacking. Get over the rivers. We retook Rome. It just took a while for the American juggernaut to get going. I mean, trade it away? No, no, no. It's saying we're trading away fuel, but we're not trading away fuel. It's a little bit weird. Okay, so gun turrets have advanced. And get the capital ship boilers and the capital ship turbines. More of our planes coming online. As I say, I'm, I'm trying now to build up my air force a little bit better. I've got a lot of units that I'm building up in the home islands to try and invade. France in 1944. Pushing through. Yeah, they're not going to win that. Positive. Uh, hopefully, this counter attack will push them out. Part of me wonders whether or not a landing at Livorno would be useful, but I think we'll probably get there relatively soon anyway. Starting to reach where there's some decent German units now. Okay, so it's 1945 and 46 text done there, which means I can get the 1943 text here. As you can see, all my technology is pretty much in line with where it should be. I just wish my fuel situation wasn't so dire. Keep pushing. Ideally, we'd like to take that port because then I can bring in another couple of fresh units. In fact, we'll take the motorized units up as well. Just keep this advance going. There's only a couple of Hungarian divisions in our way, which 
you know, there's no real threat there. The Germans really are counter-attacking with everything they have. Uh, it won't be enough, but you've got to admire their spirit. Bearing in mind that we're only defending a little bit of Italian soil here. 55 manpower to reinforce. And we've got no battles going on in the in the Pacific. Sorry. Let's see if we can't just support this attack here. Just lost the battle of the plate. Desperate to reach this port. Um, experienced commanders now. Lee Oliver. commander you know we've got a lot of experienced guys actually leading our troops uh, i believe montgomery might even be a level seven now oh no he's a level six but he's at 90 percent speaking of impressive let's push those hungarians This is the problem with when you have your allies handle the front for you. You struggle with said front. Relatively well. Fuselage aerodynamics? No, no. Right, carriers. Oh yes, I have unlocked the ability to create super I have one in the build queue. And it can carry three CAGs, which is pretty useful. But it need to build 70 free IC. Nuclear reactors, and I'm building one in Wrexham. Because I thought, where better to put a nuclear reactor than Wales? That's an English Isles joke. Right, so. Light carrier armor thickness is a good one. in this hill regions here. Including that battle there, which did not go well. Uh, and I think, did the 7th Armoured Division Desert Rats just break? Oh, of course it did. I don't know why this division breaks so much. I, is it because it's got no motorised in it, actually? Ah, that might be the reason. Oh, I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, let's move you guys around because I guess you can all sign up and fight in the same position because I'll land you all here the moment I take this port. What have they got here? Nothing much, but enough to hold me at bay. If I just had another couple of divisions, like another two core, I think I could win this. They're just fighting us in such difficult to handle terrain. We're struggling here. We are really struggling there. 
Come on, Americans. This is your job. Get involved. I, I almost am fed up with fighting in Italy because it's just such a slog. And my principal aim was to knock Italy out of the war, and I did that. Um, and to divert troops from the Soviet front, which, again, I've also done. Uh, to what I might say is pretty awesome effect, actually. Uh, they're actually nearing Kiev, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I think I'm going to call it an episode there. This was a quick update episode more than anything to get everyone back into the campaign. I hope everyone enjoys this series because the British campaign will be coming back thick and fast now that the Soviet one's done. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks again. Bye-bye.